we are so humbled to have you, Jatanjali. Uh, you epitomize a, a woman who's shattering stereotypes. So tell me, you, you learned about the Flint water crisis when you were about nine, and then you created your device around 11, is that right? Yes. Um, so tell me more about how you feel about age and defying that, that stereotype that you have to be a certain age to do something. Right, so as I, you know, I, I started to love science and inventing since second grade. And it, it or I love science since I was three. Um, I ended up loving inventing since second grade. Um, or as I called it, using science for kindness. Mm. Um, but I, I always saw that none of my friends or nobody else in my class were creating inventions. And it was always my question why. But then in the news, I kept seeing all of these big companies and everybody releasing new products and inventing new things to solve big problems. And I always questioned why. And now that I see it, it's because many people think that if you're a certain age or certain gender, you can't necessarily do the same things that others can do, mm -hmm. which I look at as wrong. Um, I'm, I like to tackle problems and I like to go for them. And it's not because I'm an adult or I'm a male, it's mm -hmm. because I am doing what I love to do. Mm -hmm. So I per personally think it doesn't matter to me what your age is or your gender or your race or anything. It just matters that you are doing what you love to do and following your passions. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very clear you've always been a woman of action. What would you say to people tuning into the live stream and the folks here of how to have the confidence to just do it? I, th I Ever since I've just seen the news, I've always had that urge to solve a problem before everyone else does it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just because I look at our entire world as one big community and that we, it's all of our duties to help each other um, so that we don't leave the planet in a gross state for this generation and upcoming generations. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I think it's important that for everybody tuning in and everybody here, it's important that we do our First of all, our everyday things, like you know, just being mindful of what we throw in the trash can, what we throw in the recycling bin, not littering. Like those small things, because collectively that's d gonna make a difference. Um, but then something else is continuing to support the efforts of um, teens like me mm -hmm. who are continuing to event invent, or being able to, um, I guess, motivate and uh, like push almost to an extent, like be able to coax or co coax is a weird word, like <laughs> uh, push empower through. Empower mm -hmm. there, empower more girls or empower more students to be involved with STEM as well. I think that's definitely going to be what our future depends on. So when you were going through your process, did you have self doubt? When I know not all the labs wanted to host you yeah. while you were experimenting, right? So how did you continue to have that confidence despite people turning you away and saying, you're too young to do this? I think every five minutes was just self-doubt. <laughs> like, so it's okay to have self-doubt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, in the beginning, I, I was almost positive this was just, this idea of mine was just gonna go beyond, like it wasn't, it was just gonna be an idea. Mm -hmm. um, but here it is as a full-fledged product today. And so it really shows how limitless um, mm -hmm. you can be. And, but what I see is that I've, I, it's always been, for me, I've always had like some aspect of self-doubt and I'm starting to get over that now. Um, but then for others, like labs and things like that, most of the responses I got back from them when it was email, my, what I always thought was the ideal response is when somebody got back to me and they said, no, we have everything laid out for you. All you have to do is come in here and do your tests. And that's what I was expecting from my first email that I sent out. And next day I get a response back that says, 
sorry, we don't have the time. Mm. And it was, it's always discouraging the first time you hear that. But um, I kept trying. I kept reaching out. And eventually, I figured out that Denver Water um, was able to help me. And um, I was talking to you earlier about how many people thought of it as an 11-year-old with a science fair project. Um, and didn't really take it seriously as somebody who wants to solve a big problem. Mm -hmm. But I think now people are starting to look at it more seriously because they're seeing these problems come to life. And you're creating solutions for these yeah. problems, <laughs> which is most important. So you've talked a lot about mentorship. How has your mentor shaped you? So uh, my mentor has really... I've, I've had a lot of mentors along my paths, and they've really just... Gave, they've given me advice, but then they've also helped me in ways which aren't necessarily giving advice. They've just helped me in terms of how, as a person, I would say, in general. Mm -hmm. So there's always aspects of maybe you can use a 1,000 ohm resistor instead of a 100 ohm resistor for the device. Sure. <laughs> Um, but then there's also ideas of never be afraid to try or mm -hmm. never be afraid to ask, which, which are some of my biggest fears were asking others for help or just trying because I was just so afraid that I was going to fail. Um, another piece of advice is just to slow down. Um, I was always ready to go and experiment um, when I literally had nothing planned out. Mm -hmm. I was ready to kill myself at that point with lead. Um, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> um, but I, I, it was a lot of, um, I guess, shaping me of who I am. And are you mentoring other people? I am. I, I mentor a lot of students. Um, and I've done a couple clubs and first Lego League teams with how they can improve their ideas and how they can how they can develop it so it can actually become a viable product. So mentorship can start at any age, yeah. which is great. So tell us, what does ambition mean to you? You're obviously quite ambitious. Mm -hmm. What does that word mean to you? So I look at it as two different things. So there's one which is taking initiative and then persistence. So for the persistence idea of things, um, it, it's a whole broad category. It's like not being afraid to try or ask, like I said, or not taking no as an answer. Like, keep pushing through any obstacle that gets thrown my way. And then for the initiative side of things, it's still being able to look at a problem and understand the need for a solution. Mm. And if anything gets thrown my way, like, commit to it and tackle it and make sure that the world is in a good place and it's, it's a better place. Well, it's a better place because you're here, which is great. <laughs> so you've talked a lot about STEM and empowering young girls through STEM, and you've also talked a lot about equal pay. So I don't think you get a paycheck yet, right? <laughs> but tell us why, why is that important to you, equal pay? Yeah, so I'm actually writing an essay about it for social studies class right now. <laughs> um, but Of uh, course you are. <laughs> Um, but the wage gap, or the gender wage gap, is a topic that's of interest to me. And the reason is it's really similar to, I guess, stereotypes that we see about, like, girls in STEM, too. Mm -hmm. um, I guess to an extent, for the same job in the same amount of time that a woman does as a man does, um, a woman receives 80 cents for every dollar a man gets, which I see is so unfair. Mm -hmm. It's like saying... Um, for if a girl builds a device and a boy builds a device, the girl gets uh, the girl gets less lab space or less opportunities to be able to share her device than the boy does, mm -hmm. which is unfair because it's still solving a big problem, and so it, it's it, it's just another idea of a st stereotype which I really interested in tackling and really interested in crushing. <laughs> we want you to crush it, Chitanjali, that's for sure. So, so I know you have a whole step process that you've recommended to other people, and I know everyone here would love to hear it. So many people in this room are entrepreneurs and Tory Birch fellows, and we want to know, step by step, what do you recommend to get something done? 
Yeah, so I call it Gitanjali's five-step process. It's really cliche, but it sounds good. <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, the, the first step is to observe. Um, it's, it's my go-to step. Like, I'll, I'll just be going on a walk. I'll see a leaf, and I'll be like, that leaf is crooked. I need to fix it, or some, uh, something like that. And um, it, it, observing is the first step to any problem that you come across. Flint water crisis, saw it on the news, I observed it. Um, opioid addiction, read it in a magazine, I observed it. And so there's like a whole bunch of these problems that come out like this. Um, one of my earlier devices was a snake bite diagnostic tool um, for remote How areas. How did you observe that? Um, <laughs> I think it was just a documentary. Okay. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. Hopefully, you didn't I, get I didn't fed. get bitten by a okay. snake. No, don't worry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then the next step is to brainstorm. Um, this is when you have this problem, but then you start to look for how can you solve this problem? What type of what type of invention can you create? Can you? And it doesn't need to be always an invention. It can be what movements can you start or what. What well, organizations or clubs can you um, start or begin to help with this cause or something like that? Um, the third step is to research. And so how are you going to go about doing this? Um, figuring out all those little details, whether you're going to use a 1,000 ohm resistor or a 100 ohm resistor. That's the question <laughs> for everyone here, right? Um, and then the fourth step is to build. Research is my least favorite part of the process because it's at a computer, and you get bored eventually. Um, next step, building, which is my absolute favorite part because it's like taking this idea that you've drawn on paper and making it a reality. Mm -hmm. And so you have the 3D printers going, or cardboard um, cutting. Or chemicals. Or chemicals right. mixing, yeah. Um, and so it's everything like being put together and coming up with something which is like your life, <laughs> pretty much, or something you are now devoted to. It's l like my tethys is my something, like my baby. Like I take care of it. It's like something I build for, with my own hands. So it's really important, something that you're always close to. And then the last step is to share your results and like be able to spread awareness like I'm doing right now about the problem, the issue, and what you're doing to help solve it. Did everyone get that? <laughs> you can now spring into action. So Jatanjali, you're 13. Yes. 13 years from now, you're doing what? Mm, so this could either go two different ways. Okay. So um, I want... <laughs> I want to be in a lab, like working in a lab, doing hands-on things, but then simultaneously I also want to be ideating products, like running an organization, being an entrepreneur, um, creating like huge, um, like biomedical devices is something that I'm really looking at. Okay. Um, yeah, as like that, that's really what I'd love to do. I want to be a geneticist when I grow up. Um, and work in the field of epigenetics, so using gene editing, which I'm obsessed with, to cure diseases, which um, it, it sounds really life-changing, so that's something I'd like to work around. Well, we want you to do that, too. <laughs> um, but breaking news, Jatanjali for president is what I say, <laughs> right? So Jatanjali, what can everyone do to support your mission? How can we help? How can we be part of what you're doing to empower girls, empower kids? I think that uh, continuing to support these efforts is the biggest and most valuable thing that everyone can do at this point. Um, and it's starting to become more of a real thing, which is, which I, it's really awesome to see that happening. Um, like, being able to understand the need for this, and, um, like, I guess with more kids being involved in STEM, like what I said in my speech earlier, like, m mentoring other people, no matter, you know, what you do or how you do it, it's important to 
share your knowledge with somebody else because I know many of the people I mentor now, I learned many of those skills from my mentor mm -hmm. too. And so it's like a chain. So when somebody mentors somebody else, that somebody else can mentor somebody else else. <laughs> and so it's, and those traits keep getting passed down. And so eventually we'll have a revolution of kid yes. inventors, yes. if that makes sense, yeah. And so don't have to worry about any of the big problems that we see today, hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I think we can all agree that Jatanjali is a reminder that it's never too early to embrace your ambitions. So thank you for being you. here with us, Jatanjali.